Hello everyone, this is Nisha Garg, Assistant Professor at Mary Professional and Law Institute. The topic for today is cyber crimes and its relation with Information Technology Act 2000. Let us first discuss cyber crimes, which means any criminal activity involving a computer, network device, or similar technology can be classified as a cyber crime. Sometimes cyber crimes are committed to generate profit for the perpetrators, while other times they aim to damage or disable the target computer or device. Additionally, cyber criminals may use computers or networks to distribute malware, illegal content, images, or other types of material. Cyber crimes refers to illegal activities conducted using computers, networks, or other digital devices. These crimes can target individuals, organizations, or even governments, and they exploit vulnerabilities in digital systems to steal data, disrupt services, or cause other forms of harm. Below is a detailed overview of various types of cyber crimes and their impacts. So, talking about the types of cyber crimes, first, hacking. Unauthorized access to computer systems or networks often with an intent to steal, alter, or destroy data. Example, data breaches, website, defacement, etc. Second, phishing. Fraudulent attempts to obtain sensitive information such as usernames, passwords, and credit card details by discussing oneself or a trustworthy entity in electronic communications. For example, fake emails, websites, or messages that appear to be in form of legitimate sources. Third, identity theft, stealing of personal information to impersonate someone else, often for financial gain, such as using stolen personal information to open bank accounts, apply for credit or make unauthorized purchases. Fourth, malware, malicious software designed to disrupt, damage or gain unauthorized access to computer systems. Such types include viruses, worms, trojan horses, ransomware or spyware. Fifth, ransomware, a type of malware that encrypts a victim's files and demands payment, usually in cryptocurrency for the decryption key. Examples, WannaCry, Petya and CryptoLogger. Sixth, cyber stalking and harassment. Using the internet or other digital means to stalk, harass, or intimate an individual. Examples, sending threatening emails, spreading false information online, and posting personal information without consent. Seventh, online frauds and scams. Deceptive practices conducted over the internet to steal money or other valuable items for unsuspecting victims. Example, online auction, fraud, uh, investment scams, and charity scams. Eighth, child exploitation and abuse. Distribution and possession of child pornography, luring minors online, and other forms of child exploitation. For example, online grooming, sex duration, and child trafficking. Ninth, cyber theft. Cyber theft is a type of cyber crime which involves the unauthorized access of personal or other information of people by using the internet. The main motive of the cyber criminals who commit cyber theft is to gather confidential data like passwords, images, phone numbers, etc. and use it as leverage to demand a lump sum amount of money. The unauthorized transmission of copyrighted materials, trademarks, etc over the internet is also a part of cyber theft. Cyber theft are committed though various means like hacking, email, SMS spoofing, etc. One of the landmark cases of cyber theft is Yahoo Inc. vs. Akash Arora 1999, which was considered to be one of the most initial cases related to cyber thefts in India. In this case, the defendant was accused of using the trademark or domain name yahooindia.com the court ordered a permanent injunction under Order 39, Rule 1 and 2, Civil Procedure Court in this case. Now, focusing on impact of cyber crimes, there are numerous factors which lead to an impact of cyber crimes in the present scenario, such as economic losses, reputational damages, privacy violations, operational disruption, national security, psychological impacts. So, 
let's talk about how we can combat cyber crimes legal frameworks by laws and regulations designed to prevent and punish cyber crimes such as the information technology act 2000 in india which addresses various cyber crimes by technological measures implementation of cyber security measures such as firewalls encryption anti virus software and intrusion detection systems uh, for example regular updates and patches to software to fix security vulnerabilities third public awareness and education educating individuals and organizations about cyber security best practices to reduce the risk of cyber crimes such as awareness campaigns on recognizing phishing emails and using strong passwords next international cooperation collaboration between countries to combat cross border cyber crimes for where agreements and treaties for sharing information and resources to tackle global cyber threats next law enforcement and cyber forensics specialized units within law enforcement agencies dedicated to investigating and prosecuting cyber crimes such as cyber forensic experts analyzing digital evidence to track down cyber criminals therefore combating cyber crimes requires a multifaceted approach involving technology law enforcement public awareness and international cooperation with the rapid evolution of technology staying ahead of cyber criminals is an ongoing challenge that demands continuous vigilance and adaptation moving ahead with the relation of cyber crimes to the information technology act 2000 also known as it act 2000 is a comprehensive piece of legislation in india which is designed to address legal issues related to cyber crime and electronic commerce it primarily aims to provide legal recognition for transactions carried out by means of electronic data interchange and other means of electronic communication commonly referred to as e-commerce so uh, here the key provisions of the it act 2000 is related to cyber crimes first legal recognition of electronic records and digital signatures under section 4 and 5 of it act grant legal recognition to electronic records and digital signatures making electronic documents as legally valid as per documents second offenses and penalties under the said act first hacking it has been defined under section 66 which says uh, an act of destroying or altering information residing in a computer resource with the intent to cause damage or harm the punishment can include imprisonment up to 3 years or a fine up to 5 lakh rupees or both second identity theft under section 66c deals with the identity theft which involves fraudulent or dishonest use of electronic signatures passwords or other unique identification features the punishment can include imprisonment up to 3 years and a fine of 1 lakh rupees third cheating by personation under section 66d punishes cheating by personation using any communication device or computer resource with the imprisonment up to 3 years and a fine up to 1 lakh rupees fourth violation of privacy under section 66e penalizing capturing publishing or transmitting the image of a private area of any person without their consent the punishment can include imprisonment up to 3 years or a fine of rupees 2 lakhs or both fifth publishing transmitting obscene material under section 67 addresses the publication or transmission of obscene material in an electronic form with varying degrees of punishment depending on the nature and severity of the content third key provision breach of confidentiality and privacy under section 72 imposes penalties for the breach of confidentiality and privacy by assessing or disclosing information without consent fourth key provision intermediary liability under section 79 it provides a safe harbor for intermediaries example isp social media platforms under certain conditions shielding them from liability for third party information hosted on their platforms provided they follow due diligence and guidelines thereafter recent amendments and enhancements under the act are 
The act has been amended in 2008 to address emerging cyber threats and to incorporate new types of cyber crimes. Some of the key amendments include introduction of section 66A which make the sending of offensive messages though through communication services a punishable offence. Note, this section was struck down by the Supreme Court of India in 2015 as unconstitutional. Second, introduction of section 66B, C, D and E. These sections specifically addresses various forms of cyber crimes such as dishonestly receiving stolen computer resources, identity theft, cheating by personation and violation of privacy. Lastly, we'll consider the impact on cyber crimes which depicts that the IT Act 2000 and its amendments have had a significant impact on the legal landscape of cybercrime in India. They provide a robust framework to combat various cybercrimes and ensure that offenders are brought to justice. However, challenges remain in enforcement. Given the rapidly evolving nature of technology and cyber threats, law enforcement agencies, cybersecurity professionals, and the judiciary must continuously update their knowledge and skills to effectively address and mitigate cyber crimes. Additionally, there is a need for ongoing public awareness campaigns to educate individuals and organizations about cyber security, best practices, and the legal implications of cyber crimes. In conclusion, the IT Act 2000, along with the subsequent amendments, represents a critical step towards creating a safer and more secure cyberspace in India. So that's all for today. Thank you.